Listen, tonight is the last, there's probably going to be no more presidential debate. So this is the last like big event, 34 days left. So this is the, the, the vice presidential debate is the last thing, the last thing that everyone will watch. And usually VP debates don't make that big of a difference. They don't move the needle that much. And listen, the presidential debate didn't move the needle that much. So I don't know if this will, but um, it's the last chance for something to change. Uh, Tim Walls lowering expectations. CNN wrote this whole story about how Tim Walls is very nervous to go against JD. Uh, so that's lowering expectations so that if he, when he blows it, it's like, well, you know, he's not a trained lawyer. He's just a regular guy. You can't expect a regular dad with big dad energy to get up there and compete against a trained lawyer. That's the, that's the spin that you'll see when he does awful. Uh, but I hope JD can, you don't have to go against, you don't go against Tim Walls. You attack Kamala. That's what JD needs to do tonight. Attack Kamala over and over. And hopefully this, Makes the makes the cut of things that are said. This is the Washington Times. The Department of Homeland Security knows of at least 660,000 illegal aliens at large in the United States. That means walking around with criminal records. They're sending their best, right? 660,000 illegal aliens with criminal records walking around, including... 13,000 convicted murderers, convicted murderers. This doesn't include the murderers that we don't know about, or meaning like people who murdered and got away with it and are here. These are people who were charged and convicted in their home countries of murder and then came here and were let free here. What, how could it possibly be? This is the Department of Homeland Security. So it's 13,000 convicted murderers, almost 16,000 who have been convicted of sexual assault. They are part of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement's non-detained docket, a list of more than 7 million illegal immigrants that ICE is supposed to be monitoring as they roam free in the U.S., and obviously they're not. 13,000 convicted murderers? What in the world? 6,567, so they're very specific. I'm going to round up just for the sake of our conversation here, but just know that every single number I give is down to the single digit. 6,567 migrants convicted of obstructing the police. 10,031 convicted of robbery, 15,811 convicted of sexual assault, 13,423 convicted of weapons offenses, 62,000, what's it, uh, 2,521 convicted of kidnapping. What? 792 convicted of arson. And these people are walking around in America right down today. I don't understand this. How is this not the top... St- how is this not the top story? I don't care what question is asked of JD in like whatever, 12 hours from now. That, that's the only thing he needs to say. JD, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on the economy? Well, listen, before we get to that, did you know, like I just start with that and every single question, it's just go, do you know, hey, do you know Kamala let in 13,000 convicted murderers from other countries into our country? It's according to the Department of Homeland Security. Just every single question, just bring that, don't say anything else. What does, how could that possibly be? And it's because of Kamala, people like Kamala, that we keep letting these people free time and time again, even when we catch them here. So these are people, these are convicted murderers from Honduras that committed a crime and they come here and then we look up their name and they get caught at the border and they, we look up their name and there's Juan, Juan Gonzalez uh, from Honduras. Okay, are you this Juan Gonzalez? The one who was convicted of murder? Yes, that's me. Okay, very good. Why are you here? Oh, I claim asylum. Okay, very good. Here's your, uh, where, would, where, would you like, where would you like your plane ticket to? Oh, we have beautiful places we could, you, could, you could choose from. Uh, we have a whole list of swing states you can fly to. Would you like to go to Pennsylvania? How about Wisconsin? It's beautiful this time. You want to go to Wisconsin? You can go to Wisconsin. Any other swing state? No, that's not a swing state. No need for you to go there. Michigan, great. Michigan, we'll send you off to Michigan. But then, when they commit crimes here, Bill Malugan uh, wrote about Fairfax, Virginia. ICE says a Venezuelan illegal alien who was caught and released at the Texas border October 2022. Now, we don't know what crime this guy's caught, committed in Venezuela. This article doesn't say. He could have murdered people. Maybe he was a rocket scientist. 
I don't know. But he was released in America. Charged later in Fairfax County with malicious wounding. You, what, is, what is malicious wounding? <laughs> malicious wounding. Uh, using a firearm. What is, what is it? Malicious wounding. That's, I always thought man, manslaughter. That's like the lowest form of murdering someone. I feel like manslaughter is like, like very dramatic. That should be like the worst form of murdering someone. Like if you murder someone, that's one thing. But if you manslaughter them, that's like way, way worse. Jeez. Uh, but it's like the lowest. Yeah, malicious wounding, I feel like, is like, 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 that seems like a PC term. Using a firearm in a felony, reckless handling of a firearm, and endangering a child. Super. So ICE, they arrested him. ICE uh, placed a detainer request on him, which just says, hey, can you hang on to that guy for a minute so we can go pick him up? But Fairfax County ignored it, released him from custody. Okay, well, one, one time, all right. Fairfax County police then arrested him again in June of 2023. He was only here in October of 2022, and he's already been arrested twice for using a firearm in commission of a felony. Okay, all right, that's twice, two crimes, the crime to get here, and then two more. Okay, ICE says they contacted the Fairfax County Jail to place a detainer on him, but Fairfax County had already released him from custody. Again, number two, he was then arrested two more times this year. This year, February and May, for DUI and hit and run. After both arrests, ICE said they placed detainer requests on him, but Fairfax County ignored ICE both times and released him from custody each time. That's four. Four. Four times this guy was arrested. Illegal alien was arrested. Four crimes. Deportation officers were finally able to arrest him, to find him and arrest him in Springfield, Virginia this month, and he remains in federal custody. Four times. Released four times into America. I want to make this point again. Intentional. Chamath. You know Chamath? Uh, Chamath's a smart, well, I don't know, I'm smart. Uh, this rich, he's <laughs> got a lot of money, Silicon Valley investor guy. Now, I stopped being impressed with that at COVID. The Silicon Valley people were the first to freak out about COVID. We don't need to go over the timeline at all. But they, they, like, the Silicon Valley people were the, they were the people who propagated, propagated? Is that the right word? Propagated? Yes. Who propagated uh, graphs without numbers. They're the ones who are like, hey, look at this graph. Uh, if we don't do anything, then we're going to be here and the hospital limits are here with this line without a number and, and we don't want to be there because then everyone's going to die. And they're the ones who threw that out there and, and tricked everyone. Or not everyone, a lot of people. Me, tricked me, I'll be honest. I was trying to get away from accountability there. Tricked me in the beginning of COVID. So I don't trust these people a lick. Anywho, Chamath is on Joe Rogan, and he's saying, you know, there's not that big of a difference between the two parties on the big issues. I hate that line. Uh, there's some, I guess I shouldn't say I hate it. There's some truth to that on some things, but like, there's other things where there's may, like, big differences, at least philosophically big in practice, maybe not as much in the end, because they don't, because our, our side doesn't do what we say we're going to do, but that's a different thing. Anyway, Chamath is like, ah, uh, you know, and Rogan said, no, 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 the border, like there were decisions that have been made on the border that were really bad. And Chamath, actually, let me see if I can play this clip too, because Chamath's like, or, or lack thereof. So, right, so Rogan's like, there have been decisions, and, lack, and Chamath says, well, or lack thereof decision. And it's like, no, 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 like definitely decisions, intentional decisions. Kamala, and I hope JD brings this up tonight. Day one, day one. They stopped the wall, removed parts of the wall, and day one ended remain in Mexico. So we let the people come in and claim asylum. They claim asylum, and then we let them free here. We let them loose here. Trump let them loose in Mexico. So wait, Mexico, till we figure it out. Remain in Mexico. Today, we let them in here. Who? I don't know, 13,000 murderers. Th pe people who have been convicted, 13,000 people have already been convicted of murder before they got here. And we let them in here. How about that? Again, it's going to the Department of Homeland Security. They did that on day one. Those are decisions. 
That's not a lack of decision. Those are active, intentional decisions, Chamath. But there is real decisions that have been made during the Biden administration about the border that are affecting people. Or lack thereof. Well, I think it's a decision. I don't think it's a lack thereof, as especially the flying people in and the utilization of an app to fly people in. That seems insane. Like, the, the whole thing seems insane, and I, I don't know what the motivation is. I've talked to people that know a lot about the construction business, and they believe the motivation is cheap labor. I think that's a part of it, and that a lot of the, the problem is, in, in many industries, the lack of cheap labor and people that are willing to do jobs. It's one of the things that I've heard, you know, there's a lot of criticism about all the Haitians that have moved to Springfield, Ohio. But one of the positive things that I've heard from people that live there is, is these people are hard workers and they're willing to do jobs that the, the other people weren't willing to take on. Okay, that's what we talked about in the last hour of the show. So you, you have pros and cons, but you have this incentivized effort to move people into this country illegally, which will undoubtedly bring in people that you don't want here. Gang members, cartel members, terrorists. terrorists. That's real. And we've documented that. And there's people that have been arrested that were trying to come in that were terrorists. And there's people that have gotten through for sure. I think that if I give both of them the benefit of the doubt, I think both of them will have to act on the border. Um, I think that Donald Trump has had a clearer view of this issue for much far longer. I think that um, Kamala has had to shift her position to make herself more palatable to centrists. Um, but I do think that both of them will probably have to act because I don't think what's happening today is sustainable. Okay, Chamath, man. Kamala has already acted. They're both acting. They both acted. Trump acted, built a wall, did remain in Mexico, which was not easy to do because Mexico doesn't want these people either. So Trump acted and then Kamala acted. Undoing other people's action is an action. 